to you by Miller High Life. To live simply, proudly, boldly, manly. This is the High Life. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. The Principal Financial Group, we understand what you're working for. And Chevy Silverado, it's the right truck. So Oklahoma strikes again and they take it on their longest scoring drive of the year. 99 yards, and cap it with a 66-yard touchdown pass. Defense stops him at the one-foot line, and the offense takes it the other way. Yeah, it was actually 99 and a half. You're right. Well, it, it's, he's going to fake a pitch back here. Here's Jones. He's just going to go straight down the middle of the secondary. Now, right here, he's got him beat right there. Just lay it out to the inside. Nice throw, nice deep throw. He's one of the best deep throwers I've seen this year. In fact, in a few years, Brad. He can get it out there, and he's climbing the charts, too, in Oklahoma annals in the passing category, that's for sure. As with his touchdown passes today, he's got 27 now. Here's Josh Fields trying to get himself in. And overshot his intended receiver, Vernon Morency, the fullback. Total yardage, Oklahoma over 400 now. And there are six touchdowns. They did it on the ground. They did it with special teams and defense. And through the air. Look at the number of plays. 72 plays to 48 for Oklahoma State. By the way, if you're thinking about the championship year and how great a year Josh Heupel had that season for Oklahoma, he and Jason White at the end of eight games each had had 25 touchdown passes. So Jason's keeping right along pace and Josh of course was in the Heisman hunt that year when they went down and won the championship from Florida State. Time permitting, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report. John Terry and Craig will have all the scores and highlights from across the country. So Jason White a couple blips on the radar today when he had a quarterback sneak through a couple touchdown passes. Teddy Lehman and the defense doing their job at Oklahoma in front 45-9. Third and six for the Cowboys. The throw tipped and intercepted. Picked off by Dante Nicholson. Josh Fields will not become a three-time winner against the Sooners. The backup inside linebacker, Allen. Allen makes, tips the ball right here. Watch 48. Right there, he's the inside linebacker that tips it in the air. And number eight, Nicholson, does the old tip drill. You know what? I think Perkins might have even gotten a little bit of a hand on it to tip it to Dante Nicholson. So Oklahoma coming back out with Paul Thompson at quarterback. Jason White's day is done. Hicks in at the tailback spot, so some fresh legs in for the Sooners. And with that, Hickson just driving. He wants to play now, too. That's the offensive line that's driving. That's those big uglies up there, Sims and Shashawn, Carter, Joseph, and Jamal Brown. That one was behind Joseph and Brown for the most part. And Jason White, big smile on his face. Guy from Little Town. Less than a half an hour outside of town, Tuttle, Oklahoma, as Swanee mentioned earlier, just became the number four passer all time, passing Nate Hibble, who he played behind after having back-to-back -back knee surgeries. So at the 27-yard line, Uh, first down at the 27. Thompson in there, quarterback in the final 740. Clayton is the motion man for the Sooners. Draw play to Hickson. There's seven and a half left here in a 45-9 game. Let's find out what else is happening around the country and go to John Saunders in New York. Well, Joe Paterno thought he had his losing streak stopped, but Scott McMullen, backup quarterback, finds Michael Jenkins five yards in the end zone with about a minute and a half to go. 
After the extra point, the Buckeyes lead by one, and the Nittany Lions have just received the kickoff. John and Terry, Craig will keep you posted on that one. Well, they can win some close games, can't they? <laughs> I guess so, in a variety of ways. Second down and six for the Sooners. And Hickson straight up the middle, busts it across the first down marker, and then some. Got to the 15-yard line. So Oklahoma is going to go to 9-0. They will go to 67-6 while they're ranked number one in the country. And we showed you what their remaining schedule looked like. Jason White, the coaches were talking about Jason. Said, what do you like about him, Bob? Coach Stoops said, he's the toughest sucker on our team. And Chuck Long said the same thing. And a guy that grew up, as I mentioned, in Tuttle, Oklahoma, and his dad used to take him out when he was about seven years old to pour concrete with him. He said, you know, let the rest of the kids go out and mess around. You're pouring concrete with me. <laughs> he was pouring said, if you don't like concrete, go get a scholarship. So he got a scholarship. <laughs> Every time football got kind of tough, he'd call home and kind of be complaining about it. His dad would say, come on back to the tunnel. We'll pour some concrete. He said, I don't think so. <laughs> I'll just tough it out. Yeah. What a great story, though. Recovered. Bob mentioned earlier the back-to-back -back years of knee surgery. Tore his left ACL in 2001 against Nebraska. And then the right ACL last year against Alabama. You know, I can't even... I remember Terry Allen, who came out of Clemson and then played with the Redskins and the Vikings. He's one of the only guys I can remember that had knee surgeries on both knees and ever played any more, period. And here's Jason White, a Heisman Trophy candidate, having done it. Throw to the corner. Bradley, touchdown! So Mark Bradley's thrown one, and he's caught one. Fifty-one to nine. Bradley is six-two, and he's working the single coverage over there on Jones, who is five-eleven. Just a jump ball. DeCarlo in for the point after. It's good. And the last two years, the memories and the bitter memories, the nightmares of the past two bedlams, the Sooners fans are about ready to celebrate now. It. But I guess if there needed to be an answer, it's been answered. The kick is deep and will not be returned. With 5.42 remaining, it's time to take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. It was a tough day for Josh Fields. Only 8 out of 21, 59 yards and interception. Couldn't get Rashawn Woods, his All-American receiver, loose. Jason White just averaged statistics, but he didn't have to be great because the defense was so good and the ground game between Kewan Jones and Ronaldo Works was so good. He rushed for uh, 213 yards, 225 yards passing. Scored on their last four possessions as Oklahoma. They had 199 yard drive. The last one was 37 yards for a score. And now Tatum Bell will rack up a little bit of yardage here as the game starts to wind down. So the dreams of Oklahoma State winning the Big 12 South, they're going to vanish here today. We mentioned the games remaining seem and look winnable for Oklahoma considering how they look today. Yeah. They're going to be favored and these are the standings coming into the day. So Oklahoma will be 9 and 0 and 5 and 0. Texas beat Nebraska today if you missed that. So the Big 12 starting to take shape a little bit. Texas the uh, their only conference blemish was to Oklahoma. They got throttled by the Sooners. Texas Tech is still on Oklahoma's plate. And that's Coach Leach, who uh, used to be the offensive coordinator here. So the Oklahoma staff know him well personally and what he does with the football. And that's put it in the air about 60 times a game. But you never know. You put it up 60 times against this group, you might get six of them intercepted. Third down and two. Full back. And nice leg drive by Sean Willis. He's got the first down. Teddy Lehman made the stop. Oklahoma, not just in football right now, but they are a well-rounded sports program in all facets here in Norman. They've done a marvelous job with the facilities around Memorial Stadium, the new indoor facility, the new weight room that Roy Williams basically donated. And uh, 
We were here about three years ago against Nebraska, I guess, when the I guess the seeds were laying uh, to put out to, to try to raise the money to upgrade the facilities. And Joe Castiglione, their athletic director, has done a, a heck of a job with not only the football team and uh, keeping Bob Stoops happy, but they all kind of work together. It's kind of a family atmosphere. Calvin Sampson came in two timeouts ago, the uh, head coach of the basketball team. Sherry Coles, the women's coach, has had her team in the Final Four. So when you get both your basketball teams in the Final Four in the last two years, you have a national championship three years ago. From this guy and another one maybe on the way, your sports program's in pretty good shape. Yeah, he said, uh, talking to Bob the other day, he says, when you got a president like David Bourne and an athletic director like Joe Castiglione, he says, uh, life is good. He's getting players are winning. Uh, Makes you a happy coach. Tatum Bell is going to get some yardage that'll add to his 1,000-yard-plus season coming in as Tatum has had a great year. Really great year, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons, and uh, only three guys in Oklahoma State history have ever done that. David Thompson and Terry Miller are the other two. A lot of you probably thought Thurman Thomas or Barry Sanders. Thurman did have a couple 1,000-yard seasons, but they were in 85 and 87. Yeah, and just, just don't forget the Oklahoma State and Les Miles, the outstanding job that he has done over there. They came into this ball game winning 13 of their last 15 games, seven of those in a row, he was a disciple of Bo Schembechler at the University of Michigan, and he has just brought this team around very nicely. Sure has. And, and they're going to continue to get better, Brad and Bob. I mean, as you pointed out earlier, Bob, he's done a great job. Blue chip recruits coming into the program, receivers like Rashawn Woods, Bell, uh, Fields, all the guys who have come to this program who helped build this program, they'll continue to get better. But on the other side, Bob Stoop understands that at Oklahoma, in order for them to continue to reach the goals that they have, they've got to dominate games like this against good coaches like Les Miles. Yep. And I hope talking about guys coming back and what they'll have next year as Tatum goes again. Ohio State is, you see, on the bottom of your screen has just beaten Penn State. In a nail biter, 21 to 20, Penn State led most of the game, and Ohio State's pulled it out. So Ohio State's got a big date next week with Michigan State. Uh, the one thing I was going to say is talking about the good players, and, and it's just a personal opinion. I hope Josh Fields comes back. He doesn't have to. He's a great baseball player, and it's draft time in Major League Baseball for him this year. Yeah. And he's only a junior, and I hope number 13 comes back because we've seen him play so well in so many games. It wasn't today to be, but. He's a good one. Well, even on the other side, the quarterback, Jason White, who is a fifth-year senior, they're talking about the possibility of he could come back. He could uh, apply for a medical hardship. That's exactly the reason the NCAA put that rule in, because of the two in knee injuries he suffered. And he could come back with this talented group around him as a six-year senior if he so chose. Is our singular wireless poll we asked you earlier if Oklahoma or Miami should lose who should be number two in the BCS Oklahoma 22 percent of their USC was everybody's vote and almost a hundred thousand people hopped in there to vote and I think that would be my vote too here's fields and somebody makes a catch on the sideline but it's an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman it doesn't count well, Bob, I'd say Oklahoma is one of your hot teams. Yeah, but uh, you know they they are they are hot. They are really hot. UCLA is hot. Missouri, USC is hot. Uh, Boise State looked really good. Uh, Michigan is hot. And then your boy, he did the other night. We're doing cross. We do all sports here now. <laughs> he did look pretty good, didn't he? Yeah, he looked good back to back nights. Yep. Uh, but you know, not everybody is hot. We also have the who's not hot, you know. We'll probably take a look at that right after second and ten. Fields throws complete to Willis, the fullback. Okay, so who's not hot? Well, you know, I you know, I hate that. <laughs> not <Wait>, anybody. <laughs> But, uh, you know, just some teams just aren't very hot. Wisconsin has lost a couple of games. Uh, Penn State uh, lost a tough one today. So LeBron is hot, but his team's not. That's it. I like the way you think. <laughs> no high in team, right? Uh-uh. <laughs> Final couple minutes here in Norman. Still bringing the blitz. Down goes Fields. And that one's 
Aaron Allen. And he also had Dante Nicholson coming off the corner as well. This will be a happy group in Norman tonight. It is a record crowd. We told you that coming in, that it would set a record. And Brent Venable says, let's just play it safe here. Let's not do anything crazy. 84,027 is our attendance today. That is a new record. We got a timeout with 116 remaining. It's 52 to 9, Oklahoma in front. 116 in North.